So, uh, when you are uh, speculating or when you are investing, how do you know how much of it is luck and how much of it is skill? Uh, I have a simple uh, yardstick if I am making too much money too fast and that could be one month, two months uh, or even uh, six months, uh, much faster than what I thought I would, I then realize that some of it is uh, luck. So, then I start booking some profits at least saying look this it can't be so good it is too good to be true. But if it makes money to me slowly over a period of time then I am not so scared. For example, Thomas Cook, uh, Mahindra Holiday Resorts, Indigo, uh, care, uh, care Ratings right. So, these are all shares which have made money for me but slowly because I bought more and more at higher prices. So, then I do not feel so scared. So, I have my average cost in uh, case of say care would be let us take just care would be 400 rupees or 406 or 408 or something like that and that will keep increasing if, if I keep buying the share at uh, the pri current price of say 1000. Obviously, the average price will keep going up but not too much because I bought enough quantity at lower prices. So, my 407 can become 408 or something like that it is not going to jump to 960 unless I buy a real huge quantity which I want uh, right. So, some of the so I can afford to hold from an average price of 400 which might become 425 over a period of time and sell off everything at something like 2000 rupees assuming that it reaches 2000. Am I saying it will reach 2000? No, I am just giving an example. So, similarly with Tata Power I started buying at 30 and uh, I kept buying at till 70, 80 then I sold then I bought again. Uh, now, the price is 260 or 250 whatever I have not even seen it for a long time. So, here I do not feel so scared, but then some other share which I bought say Suzlon or Deccan Gold, uh, Deccan Gold my average cost must be less than 6 rupees right. So, now it is at 90. So, I do not know enough about gold to know whether to hold on to gold or hold on or uh, to hold on to Deccan Gold or not hold on. I do not have any data. Except that once I had met the MD and he said, oh, in Australia, the share would be discounted much higher, the price should be much higher, not so low. So, then I am just holding on to it, but there is just not enough data in gold mining companies, right. So, how much gold they will get, when they will buy, when they will sell, right, nothing of that is known. And normally, when you strike a lot of gold, the first thing you do is to sell off that company, because every mine you make it into a separate company. I have no clue how this thing is going to pan out, but I know that I have got a large margin of safety and therefore, I can stick around. So, what are the yardstick which I do use? First is, uh, is it going up too fast? Am I making too much money too quickly? Then there is a great element of luck. What got you to buy that share at that price is just luck because you could have bought something else, right? Instead of buying Coal India, I could have bought Larson and two. I would have still made money, but Coal India is a three bagger already, almost a two, two and a half bagger already, right? So, plus the dividend. So, if I take the dividend cash flow, the my IRR should be a very, very healthy uh, double digit number, right? So, so, if it makes too much money too fast, uh, I would book my profits. So, I have no reason why I should not book my profits. Uh, I also realized that some amazingly stupid theories work for some people. Uh, when these things happen, I do not get any FOMO. I look at them and I feel sad for them uh, rather than saying, oh my god, I should have bought this, I should have copied. It does not. I would rather copy a good fund manager uh, after talking to him or her. Uh, rather than um, try to copy somebody who is making money with a bad strategy. Sometimes it does make money with bad strategy, a market, uh, market does not say oh this is good strategy. I remember uh, speaking to in one of India's uh, best bowlers in terms of number of wickets and he said that uh, uh, you take a lot of trouble and bowl a good ball, uh, but uh, you do not get a wicket right. The batsman does something or it goes down the leg side or something like that happens and uh, or he is able to tackle it luck or whatever. And next ball you bowl to him very frustrated saying look I have not got a wicket in my best ball and he hits a rank uh, full toss, he hits it straight into the hands of cover and you got a wicket. Are you going to say I do not want this wicket for this ball, I should have got it in the previous ball? No, you are not going to say that. So, right. So, realize that sometimes it is luck, sometimes it is effort. Um, I uh, have a feeling that some of the best investors are humble. They really credit a lot of their success to the market and uh, when you sit and analyze, you realize that they are right. Uh, 
so some of us were just born at the right time and we were in the market at the right place am i saying that la next uh, 30 years you will not the equity markets will not go up as the last 30 years i am not very sure that it will go up so steep the steepness that our generation saw while in say 2003 to 2007 I doubt whether you are going to see that kind of steepness. 3,000 becoming 21,000 uh, in 4 years. I doubt whether you are going to see a 700% return in 4 years because there are too many forces at play. Somebody will come and dampen the market and you will not make that kind of money. So, uh, staying humble is very useful. But uh, another question is, uh, is crypto luck or crypto strategy? I don't know. I have not bought any crypto, so I can't, I can't really talk about it. But if you buy some asset which you don't really understand, crypto not too many people understand what they are doing, then keeping on booking profits at every jump is a necessity, whatever. Let's say you bought 10,000 uh, shares of a particular company at 20 rupees and you didn't have too much conviction and suddenly you find it went from 20, 30, 40, 80. Uh, the question is how many shares should you be holding by the time it reaches 80 because you don't have enough conviction. That is always the challenge in investing. Thank you.